Here we have my Queen Anne and Chippendale chairs. Two there, two there with my dog. And I said I'd do a video on the difference between Boston and Philadelphia chairs. So when you look at these two chairs here, you will notice they're from Philadelphia. I have the bottoms out except for that one there because it is tacked onto the uh, skirt, so I can't lift it out. So you'll notice, no stretcher. Here's another Philadelphia chair, no stretcher. Here's a Boston chair, stretchers. Okay, now some early Queen Anne Philadelphia chairs did have stretchers in the back, connecting the two back legs, but that was short. Short in time, didn't last. In Boston, they pretty much always used stretchers through the Queen Anne in early Chippendale period. And later on, they began also to eliminate the stretchers. So that's how you can tell uh, generally Boston versus Philadelphia. Now, when you also look, you'll see the backs. See that splat? That splat. Look at the size of them. Another Philadelphia chair. But when you look at the Boston chair, it's a lot, a lot narrower in the width. So generally, New England chairs, Queen Anne and Chippendale, the splats are narrow. And the overall size of the chair, just look at the front skirt of the Philadelphia chairs. Then when you come to the Boston chair, it's smaller, much smaller. So that's another way you can tell a Boston chair. Now when you see feet like this, those are called Triffid feet, right there. Those are only Philadelphia. Only Philadelphia made them. So that would be a clue right there, where the chair comes from. Ball and claw, pad feet, and double pad feet in the Boston chair uh, were more common, but double pad feet in the Boston chair was more likely going to be New England. What I mean by double pad, let's see how under the foot right here, if I can point, there's a big pad underneath there compared to this one where there's a small pad. See the difference? That would be Boston. This could also be Boston. But this here will never be Philadelphia. This is always Boston, but Boston can have this, this one too. So there's another way of telling. And of course, there's your stretcher. Very important, the way Boston did their stretchers. That is very typical of Eastern New England. Very typical. Another way is the internal blocks. In Philadelphia chairs, we have to skip that chair, you will see a two-piece rounded block in the front, a one-piece rounded block in the back. Almost never nailed. They might have been nailed later on in history when the block, the glue failed. Another Philadelphia chair the rear block, the same. The front block, double. Glued. Doubled. What I mean by double, one piece here, one piece here, rounded. Okay. New England or Boston, the rear block, oh, that's different. That's triangle. Always nailed. Triangle, one piece. Triangle, one piece, always nailed. And this would have rose head nails in it. If you can see. Always rose head nails. So there is another characteristic. And then I have to get behind the chairs. And one of the biggest characteristics 
is how the styles attach. When you look here, you will see mortise and tenon. See that piece of wedge right there and two pegs? That is Philadelphia. Occasionally, once in a while, a Connecticut chair will come out that way. So here's a Philadelphia chair. Here's another Philadelphia chair. Same thing. The other side. Same thing. Notice the legs. When you look at these legs, they're very smooth all the way up as they taper. Here they block out a little bit, but all the way down is a nice taper. The other Philadelphia chair, all the way down is a nice taper. The wood, two-pieced back here. This is called the shoe, see the two-piece? Always gotta have two pieces as, as far as I'm concerned. Boston also did that. But the wood here, in here with the light shining, will be the same wood as the chair is made from. Now I'll come over here to the other Philadelphia chair. And it's the same thing. There's your wedge going through, mortise and tenon. There's your peg. This chair only had one peg. On the other side, if I can get it, you can see it there. Again, very tapered leg. But when we come to the Boston chair, I have to adjust myself here because I'm filming in the kitchen today because it has the most room. Notice, no tenons, no mortise and tenon. No mortise and tenon, there's a peg. There is a big difference between the two. As you come down, the leg tapers and tapers, and then it comes to some design here. Notice how it's squared? See, you come down here, there it's squared, because it's receiving here a uh, part of the stretcher. Another Boston characteristic. And then here, I thought in my previous video, that this bottom, see this shoe, two-piece shoe, the bottom piece was uh, walnut that just didn't take the stain, that's maple. In Boston, habitually, on the back splat, would use a cheaper piece of wood just to save some wood. That's another characteristic of Boston. So there's just a few items, if you're ever shopping, antique shop auction that can help you with um, identifying where the chair is from. Queen Anne always had solid splat. That's a beautiful walnut splat. Queen Anne mostly was walnut. When they went to Chippendale then they pierced the splat and usually went to mahogany though early chairs continued in walnut. Notice how that Chippendale splat is pierced. That Chippendale splat is pierced. And that Chippendale is pierced. They just did that as a matter of style. So there's your Philadelphia chairs. Take a look at the feet. I'll go over here. Now, another characteristics of Philadelphia chairs is the, if you have a claw and ball, the claw right here on a Philadelphia chair will come off and go down. And a Boston chair will come off and go to the back. So that's a Philadelphia chair. That's another, and other, you know, New York chairs and Connecticut chairs, they also had their Characteristics. See how that claw there goes straight down. A Boston chair will be angled. That's a dragon carrying a large pearl. And of course, as I said earlier, the double pad feet, very typical Boston. See the double pad feet? 
compared to that one and that one. Well, the pad is actually, if I can get it, underneath this pad actually extends a little bit out from the foot. Just characteristics. Now you might say, why were there characteristics like that? Because in order to make enough money to live back then, you had to produce quite a bit of product. And the easiest way to produce a lot of product is to do it over and over again. So the guy that made that foot, that's all he did all day for the rest of his life. He might have made one of those once in a while. But once you get good at making this or this foot or that foot or that style, then you can do a lot and then you can sell a lot and that's how you stayed in business. So uh, that's what happened. There was no internet then, there was no satellites, communications, cell phones. It was very isolated and you got used to your style. And you, because you that's where you produced the most. You could maybe produce 50 or 60 of those legs a day versus 10 of something else that you're not used to producing. So that meant you can sell more chairs and you can make more money. So that's why styles uh, emerged geographically because of the isolation. And that's where accents come from, people talking in different Philadelphia, New York, Boston accents, because people were isolated compared to the way they are today. So nice chairs, Boston chair. Take a look at, if I can get it to focus, the stretchers. Those stretchers w were used in the Queen Anne period and also the Chippendale, but in the Queen Anne period, there was a ring here. And they eliminated that. Here's your typical stretcher. And all your hand tooling and rosehead nails all are required to show how old the chair is. Show you on this Philadelphia chair. Come on, camera. A nice rose head nail. Four points. See the four points? Looks like rose petals. Each one of those points, or flat areas, I should say, is a bang of a hammer from a blacksmith in the 1700s. See how that flat is, flat part is facing me? Then there's one on the other side. There's four of them. Then there's a point in the middle because each one of those flat spots is a bang of a hammer to make a head from a little iron piece of uh, rod. And it was very expensive to make nails. That's why they use pegs. Pegs are cheap to make. So look for rosehead nails. So that's uh, Philadelphia. Two Philadelphia chairs. Another Philadelphia chair in my kitchen. A Boston chair. Walnut, walnut, mahogany, walnut. And this chair has never, ever been refinished. Never been refinished. You could see that it's a little darker here, but they grabbed it to move the chair and not as dark there. So a nice chair. Thanks for watching.